I'm Lena Fusant, 48, I'll be 49 this June. I grew up in uh, Kamsak, Saskatchewan. It was pretty rough. I came from a violent home. There was a lot of drinking. My real parent was very, uh, not very understanding. It was, uh, my dad came from Russia. Uh, and my mother was Syrian Cree. They were, they never got along. I was fighting, arguing. We didn't have much food in the house. Because dad would drink it up and every time I asked my dad for a little bit of money to go get candies, uh, he'd get mad at me and he said, go get a job, go pick bottles or whatever. He was painful. And I grew up uh, with my grandparents. I was about seven years old. I was raised in foster homes. I was, uh, if I didn't listen or if I didn't do the chores, I'd get smacked around. My, uh, my stepdad sexually abused me too. It was, it was hard for me to let go of a lot of things. Um, I was basically felt angry towards them. I remember when they came to visit me in 1970 in Regina. Um, I didn't want to see them. I said some disgraceful things to my dad. I called them every names in the book. And I was just, I was brought up in, uh, I was told to have respect, show kindness, courtesy. I didn't get along good with the kids at school because I was a stubborn person. I was always wanted to do my own thing. Yeah, I had my grade 10. I took a pre-employment program it was training on the jobs, six days in school, and then three days at work, and then three days at, uh, in, yeah. And then I, I came here in nine, 200 and something, I was brought here by a uh, mental health nurse. I was, uh, I came here in 2006 because I was in and out. I was kicked out of places due to my drinking. Well, I was in, uh, domestic violence program to learn how to cope with uh, spouses. I have, I was living with two spouses, two boyfriends. My daughter's dad is uh, native traditional and same with my son's dad. But I 
since I lived here, it's been roller coaster up and down and not nowhere. Drinking a tendency to get vicious like a dog. I growl at everybody. I, I get, uh, if nobody pays attention to me, I get really upset, very defensive. I'm always, uh, it's something to do with my childhood, something to do with uh, not being loved in the appropriate way. I lived on the street for about 30 years. And when I, I drink so I can escape from reality. I didn't want to face any problem. And I slept on benches, uh, underneath trees in the cold. I was kicked out of my relatives' homes. It, it was scary, though, too, because I remember waking up one night and I had blood all over me, and I was unconscious for a while. And next thing I came to, I woke up and I. I looked around, and there was nurses and doctors. Some guy hit me over the head with the weapon. I was, uh, because I wouldn't have, yeah. I was, uh, I mean, since I came to Saskatoon, it's been, I meet all my friends, street buddies. I meet all my cousins. But I'm hoping I don't have to keep living in shelters all the time because I want to get my own place. I want to do my own thing. Like if I want to sleep, I can sleep. If I want to... Most of them are bad influence on me. Try to get me to convince me to do drugs with them. Try to convince me to uh, go to parties. And now I've decided I really want to stay sober to get my life together. I can't live like this because my health went down uh, a few months ago. I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping. I'd wake up, uh, times I wake up not knowing who I am or who was standing beside me when I was intoxicated. Uh, then I, when I get feeling angry, when I get, uh, take my anger on others, I, you know, it, I feel bad about it the next day. And I think about, I thought, why did I go and do things like, say things that I'm going to regret? But now, since I came to the lighthouse it's, this time, it's really helping me kind of, your staff has really given me guidelines, um, teaching me how to become a better person in a positive way. Look, I realize I can't always have my cake and eat it too. <laughs> so it's, you know, and plus, you encouraging me to go into treatment. You know, I just, and I get, um, everybody loves me here because I'm sober. <laughs> oh, have lots of fun, you know. And, you know, when I go to treatment, I'm going to miss all you guys. Like, it just, 
I'm not a very, I'm not a person that says farewell, like, and uh, every time a crisis comes up, I run away from it. I go right back to the bottle, and I, and when I do get to the bottle, a booze, it just, wow, like it scares me, you know. Uh, I'm thinking, oh, why did I go and do that, you know? And I feel guilty, I feel remorse the next day. But, you know, you, it's kind of helping, being around spiritual people, it's helping me to, to grow, to, to live a good life each day. First thing in the mornings when I wake up, I have to say my prayers and ask God to help me to get through that day without the booze. And it's not easy. Like it's recently, I just lost two relatives of mine <sighs> to the drug overdose. I'm just, you know, but I'm gonna, I wanna do the best I can. It's, I don't know what else. But I just, you know, I just wanna say thank you to you guys for your encouragement, for your kind, for your smiles. Because it makes my day when I see somebody smiling and when I see them. I'm learning to have fun in recovery now. And this is what teaches me to uh, stay off the booze, stay off the drugs, learn to say no. That's the hardest part for me was to say no. I have two kids and if anything ever happens to my kids, I don't know, I'll never forgive myself for this. Yeah, it just really, so yeah. And I'll miss grandma's cooking too. I'll miss her cooking because she's such a good cook. 